Uh, my name is Matt Morgan. I'm an uh, organizer with the Indigenous People Solidarity Movement of Ottawa, uh, Books to Prisoners and Occupy Ottawa. And today you're giving a workshop on Indigenous sol Solidarity? Yeah, Indigenous Solidarity for Settlers. Can you give a brief overview of what the purpose of the workshop is? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm White. I'm from Ottawa. Um, the purpose of the workshop is to uh, educate non-Indigenous people about the importance of Indigenous solidarity. Uh, there's three components to the workshop. The first is an exercise based on the experiences of the Lubicon Cree. Um, the second is a more open discussion about what is solidarity. Uh, the, the words we've used a lot, but we don't always, I, I certainly don't always know exactly what it means. Uh, how do we do solidarity in practice and all this sort of thing. And then the final piece is a more theoretical uh, look at heteropatriarchy and the three pillars of white supremacy and what those mean in terms of building an anti-colonial movement and what it means in terms of doing indigenous solidarity organizing. So what do you think, um, what do you think people will come out of the workshop feeling? Um, the exercise uh, with the Lubicon Cree is uh, designed and, and uh, hopefully it does uh, bring up a bunch of the feelings uh, of you know, anger and the fury, powerlessness. Um, because of the way the workshop's designed, basically uh, it's, the example is the Lubicon Cree had uh, a huge part or almost all of their territory destroyed or, or taken. Um, by oil companies. Uh, at, the, at the moment there's uh, five oil drills or oil derricks, or I forget what they're called, per one person in, in, that, in that community. So that, that exercise is really to connect with people emotionally. Um, and solidarity, uh, I want to you know, challenge people on, on what solidarity is and what it means and why, you know, there's things happening right here in, in Ottawa, the South March the Highlands, uh, the, the Wakefield uh, tree sit um, that were indigenous solidarity things, but people, for whatever reason, chose not to get involved. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to like place blame on them. You know, I, I know that people are busy, but uh, that indigenous solidarity is is something that uh, there's lots of ways that we can do it. Every organization can practice indigenous solidarity. It doesn't have to be a, like a, like I'm part of an indigenous solidarity group. That's what we do. That's great. But if you're an anti-poverty group. You can do indigenous solidarity work, and a lot of poor people are indigenous, or a lot of indigenous people are poor. Um, if you're doing uh, anti anti violence stuff, you can focus on violence against indigenous women, uh, and so on and so forth. That, and then, uh, and then, I, you know, the solid, and then the, the theoretical stuff. I want to connect with people's minds as well, get them thinking about the the structures, the systems, um, working on that analysis. Because when we have a shared, I think when we have a shared analysis. It's that much easier to work together. We know we have we have a common understanding of what the problems are, and that can help us build a, a common front in terms of trying to address and uh, eliminate those problems. So when um, when there is a lot of negative problems um, that you're that you're dealing with and you're talking about, how do you think people feel empowered on the issues? Well, that's really important. Uh, it's a good question. Um, the goal is certainly not to leave people in that place where it's just, oh, there's so much bad stuff. It's like, there's all this stuff, bad stuff happening. What can we do to change it? And we can change it. And we can, like, what can we do in our day-to-day -day lives to change it? What can I do in my job if I'm in a position that I can hire people? Or if I'm in a position to suggest that somebody get hired? Or what can I do, you know? There's all sorts of things in our daily lives that we can do uh, that are uh, changes that we can make that will improve things. And then in our in our organizing, that's one of the focuses. Um, so it's about resistance and celebrating resistance and uh, doing it joyfully as well. You know, it's not uh, oh everything's terrible, everything's terrible. How we ever think shit's fucked up. Don't get me wrong, and, and you know everybody knows that. But it's also we can fight back and we can have a lot of fun when we're fighting back. It actually is, in my experience, a lot of fun to fight back and say fuck you to the powerful. People. Fuck you, and you're not going to you're not going to do this to us anymore, right? Can you talk about just one inspiring example of something you've been involved with? Um, well, one example that I found very inspiring, although I was not involved in it, I was arrested uh, arrested for it, was the firebombing of the RBC fire uh, bank in, in the Glebe. 
Um, it was an example of uh, a level of resistance that I found really uh, powerful. Um, I found it really necessary. I was glad that uh, Roger uh, and whoever else was willing to take that risk. Um, there's certainly some, uh, some questions around, uh, around the statement and, and how things are done, but uh, I, was, I was deeply and still am deeply inspired by that. Um, that's a, that's a militant example, I guess. Um, I've also been very inspired. I was really inspired by going out to sitting around the, the sacred fire at the South Mar Islands. Uh, that was, for me, it really changed changed my way of looking at activism. Uh, I've gotten been going to so many meetings, and I've gotten so fed up with going to meetings and blah 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 blah. Meetings are important. I'm not, I'm not trying to say they aren't, but sometimes you know it's just up to here. Um, and sitting around the sacred fire and getting to talk to somebody and getting to walk out on the land and getting a bit of a sense of that place it connected me emotionally with that place much more than a workshop would have done or going to a meeting about it or any, anything that I could really think of. I made, I made friends, uh, I, it connected me to the, to the place, it connected me to the people. Um, and uh, yeah, those, would be, I would, those are two examples, two quite different examples. Thanks. Right. So can you uh, just, I don't know who first, but just give impressions about how you found the workshop? Um, my name is Rochelle Sobe and I was um, very confused at the beginning of the first exercise and um, not quite sure what we were going to do, but as that unveiled itself, um, you know, I was super excited that what we were sort of role playing was an actual real circumstance that people are living and so I thought that that was a very effective tool within the workshop is to kind of leave things kind of um, unexplained to a certain degree and leave people with that sense that a lot of people who are having land struggles have of being totally, you know, fish out of water, no clue what's going on. Um, I think that um, the explanations embedded in this workshop of um, you know what those roots of what um, you know violence against indigenous peoples have looked like the colonialism the patriarchy and uh, the capitalism and the white supremacy um, are very important roots to talk about and talk about and talk about but i particularly appreciated um, Matt's delivery of Andrea Smith's work and sort of this um, shifting of talking about white supremacy in this very simplistic way that often leaves us in this dichotomized position to really rooting it in, in sort of the history of the development of that and, and taking you know the colonial piece and the imperial war piece and the capitalist slavery piece and actually bridging those out. Um, I think that that's a bit of the, um, the conversation that we don't have often enough where it becomes really simplistic in saying, you know, there's, there's white people and they're racist and colonialism sucks without necessarily fleshing out for people how this colonized dominance has actually gotten so deeply rooted in their minds and has been bridged by all these other sort of um, pieces of how power and master-slave shit has worked throughout our history. Um, well, for me, um, the, fir the, uh, the first part of it, like I did it, I did it last week, so uh, it wasn't really a new or a surprise to me, but like um, when I was first doing it, um, I thought it was very interesting because it um, portrayed like how little time people really have to react and it's all a surprise and like the government really doesn't listen to you and a lot of the ex a lot of like the uh, papers that were handed out while reading it it reminded me a lot of my a lot of personal experiences that happened out in Canada um, with the South March Highlands um, so some, some of that was a little bit personal as well um, the YouTube that we the, the YouTube video that we watched was um, that was all new to me. Um, I didn't know any of that, and it was particular. It was uh, pretty disturbing, um, unfortunately. Um, as for when we got into the discussion, 
Um, the discussion was really fascinating to hear like different people's experiences and uh, what, what people thought about uh, indig indigenous rights issues. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess, um, what would be three things that you came out with um, about indigenous solidarity, solidarity? What does it mean? What are the three key things that you would tell someone what indigenous solidarity is or being in solidarity is? Well, I think that, you know, it was summed up in a number of different ways, but the basic idea of, you know, listening, taking direction and, you know, putting personal power aside and then, um, you know, really, really, really um, doing the, the long-term work, sticking around in a struggle for a long period of time, long enough to actually... <clears throat> have people instruct and and share not just you know what's going on but what's going on from a different framework than a lot of people come from so this idea of listening very closely this idea of actually remaining a part of a struggle for long enough to actually belong to it um, are I think things that really stand out for me in terms of how we build solidarity and take responsibility for that. what that means. And then, um, you know, a point that Matt shared that's really strong for me is really watching the problem of appropriation and how quickly we can adopt each other's struggles in an attempt towards solidarity, but accidentally just recreate those same sort of power structures. Do you have something to add? Um... I, found, I find that like um, learning a lot about the issue and then going over there and not just like reading it out of a textbook but like going over there and talking to people um, who are experiencing it firsthand and uh, listening to, to their experiences um, and then as you said sticking, sticking around for the long haul and like helping people out. Um, and then coming home when like when all is done, assuming it ever does finish, coming back home and teaching people at home what's going on, um, and and spreading spreading the issues so that people know that these things are out there and they're happening and there's a lot of a lot of cultural appropriation, a lot of destruction of indigenous lands and indigenous culture. What would be say one thing that we haven't mentioned so far? One takeaway thing from the workshop that. You got. One thing that I'll take away from this particular workshop is that um, putting people of privilege in a position, even through a role play, of having a direct experience emotionally of what it would be like to have you know somebody come along and throw in the pipelines and put in roads and all these other things that uh, that until we can actually get to a space of. Um, emotionally responding to what is happening to people um, that we're probably not likely to sort of shift things. Yeah, um, I learned a, a little bit more about like solidar what solidarity means with uh, Indigenous people, um, about people's personal experiences, and also um, it's really hard to per put in perspective um, actually experiencing what indigenous people experience on a, on what they experience daily it's really hard to put that in perspective and i mean uh what i learned from in the south march highlands um is only a fraction of what what the people what indigenous people deal with um i only got i mean they've destroyed the land but i still have a home i still have food i still have drinking water um, I have like I have all the privileges of like any any person any privileged person would. Um, so just just thinking of like what what kind of trouble that they would have had to go through uh, during that time, the confusion, the uh, the health issues, and not actually having funding from the government and like no one realizing that like there was no one really there for you to help you out. Thanks. Cheers.